Hello, hello. Welcome to Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie. I'm Julie Davison, and this is my beautiful mother, Susan LaCroix. We are so excited that you are joining us for this week's episode. It is Sunday, August 13th. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it's already halfway through August. We've been sharing projects every single Sunday. We haven't missed one for the last two years. It's been so much fun. Has it been two years? It's been two years. Yeah, right? Yes, over two years of sharing with you every week using the same Stampin' Up! products and um, showcasing different things. So I'm really excited about this week's product. Um, dipping into a little Christmas, it seems early, but um, I, I, we've got so many beautiful Christmas things out that it's hard to wait. <laughs> oh, is it ever. My, my new pre-order came and it's, I was showing Julie earlier. It's spread all over my table. <laughs> and I have a class here tomorrow, so. Uh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be it fine. Be. No, <laughs> I got this. Well, we are going to hold the sneak peeks. I think next week. I think next week we're going to start with some sneak peeks. Um, but this week we have um, something that you can get right now. And so that's why we're super excited to share some project ideas with it. So I'm going to flip the camera over, Mom, so that you can reveal our featured stamp set today. Okay. So this is so very merry. And uh, this has been far more popular than Stampin' Up! thought it would be because it <laughs> off the shelves. Be before I even got it. I mean, it was, you know, I ordered it and before it even could get here, it was gone. But Stampin' yeah. Up! and its wisdom uh, did another run. <laughs> <laughs> so it is now back in stock and available. Um, it is a um, photopolymer stamp set. It's got 10 images. It, uh, let me see, we got a, a little gingerbread house. We got a cardinal. I think it's a cardinal. Uh, bells, some holly, an angel, and a Santa. And we have peace and joy, very merry. Oh, what fun. Tis the season to be jolly. So lots of greetings to go along with the varied interests so, or uh, images. So you can get, got a glue dot here. <laughs> so you can get um, a lot of different looks with this stamp set. This is one of the online exclusives that was released on July 6th. So you're not going to see it pictured in a catalog, uh, but it is one of several um, Christmas theme project products as well that was released on um, July 6th. So there is still some, some Christmas to be had, even while we're waiting for that mini catalog. And it is back in stock. Like you said, it was kind of sold out <laughs> right away. <laughs> Uh, a couple days after the release, but they've made some more. I love that our stamps are made right here in the USA. They're made in Utah, um, down in Kanab. So, um, so great that they were able to make some more and have it be available again. Julie, are you ready? I am. So right. I just wanted to share a couple of projects that I had ahead of time with you. Um, you know what, how I feel about coloring. <laughs> Um, I, I find it a struggle sometimes. And so I was a little intimidated by this stamp set and I wasn't going to get it. Um, but then there wasn't a lot that was released for the online exclusives. And so that's why I decided to get it. And I think that's maybe why it was so popular because, um, people maybe who wouldn't have bought it ended up buying it. Well, one of the first cards I made was this little tag for my 12 days of Christmas gift box and really simple, no coloring. I stamped in real red. Um, and then some shaded spruce with the sentiment, very merry. So you don't have to color with this stamp set. I also made um, this one, which I colored with fresh freesia and balmy blue. I don't know how well it shows up in the camera, but I've got some wink of Stella on the wings. And then I was playing around making our card for today and I wanted to use a different image. And so I pulled out the gingerbread, but I just wasn't happy with the way it turned out. I oh. did this one first and I didn't really like it with the black. So I tried to emboss it with white because I was trying to go for those white sort of icing lines, but I'm not sure how I like that either. So I decided to scrap that and go in a completely different direction and get that bird out. So <laughs> I wanted to share a little tip with you. I'm not going to color the, the whole thing. I've cut, I colored some of it already and I have one that's pre-done so that you don't have to watch me 
cut it out. But um, I'm using real red. So I've got a light and a dark marker. And the one thing I figured out that's really easy with this stained glass set is to do like in every other with the light and the dark and just kind of alternate. So that's what I did when I colored these. And it's the same way I did the angel as well. Um, I just did some light sections first, and then I went back with the dark and I did um, some dark sections and I didn't worry about shading the individual sections. So they are just straight light and straight dark. And I think the variation and the alternation just sort of makes it look like that stained glass. So here is all the light and I'm gonna go back and add with the dark. And I looked up Cardinals to see about the coloring of the face and around the face is actually black, but I didn't wanna color it black. So this is my creative license. <laughs> um, color your Cardinal without a black face. Okay, I used pecan pie and mossy meadow on the the branch and the leaves, and then I cut it out. So that's what we got here. I just used my um my scissors and I just fussy cut. I got real close, but left a little white border all the way around. Um, our card base. This is kind of a simple card this week. <laughs> uh, I've got mossy meadow for my card base, five and a half by eight and a half. I have a piece for the inside, which I've already stamped. It's just four um four inches by five and a quarter. I'm going to glue down as I go today. That's how, that's how fast this card is. Um, so I got that right on the inside. And then for the front, I'm using three different pieces of that um, one horse open sleigh designer paper, but I'm using all the back sides with the other patterns. I love that that paper pack has so many different patterns that are really versatile for um, for other things. I love the storybook illustration images, but there's just a lot of really great, like solid, I always call them B patterns um, on the other side. So I'm going to use those today. I've got four inches by five and a quarter. Again, this is for um, the designer paper on the front. And then I have a piece that is one and a half by four and a quarter. And as always, we'll put the measurements for you in the video description. Now this one I'm gonna customize a little bit and I'm gonna do some stamping. I'm gonna use my Mossy Meadow ink pad and that sort of holly, holly leaf image. And I'm going to stamp, I kind of want my um, one and three quarter inch circle with vellum. I'm gonna use my bird as a guide. I'm using a regular adhesive to adhere it to the vellum circle. And then I'll end up putting the vellum circle on with stamp and dimensionals. But I need to kind of use that as a guide to know where to stamp my images. So I'm going to just kind of line that up and then pull it away and stamp so that the holly images appear on either side. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Make it up closer there. Um, so I've got a little little holly on there. And then my red square is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And I am going to just layer this. Well, first let's do this. I'm going to add my circle on with Stampin' Dimensionals. I feel like I'm going really fast. And I'm pretty sure we're going to set a record today for the shortest video ever. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done mine yet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm making up for yours. Um, uh, mine shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Okay, so ah, come back off. I'm trying to just center that. There we go, that's better. Now I want to center this bit um, on the red square. So depending on where it is, you know, I'll, I'll put my red square centered underneath. So it's gonna go right about there. The bird is centered over the red square. And then I'm going to put some adhesive on the back. And this is going to go in the bottom right corner of the card front. Kind of a simple layout. Originally I cut this four and a quarter green piece because I was thinking I would have the card go this way. Um, but then, you know how cards evolve sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Um, so for this entity, I have the Tis the Season to be Jolly, but I don't want the whole thing. I just want something skinny. So I'm going to strategically ink the Tis the Season so that I'm not inking the To Be Jolly. And I've got a little skinny strip here that is um, probably just like a, a half an inch maybe. And it fits perfectly on that. So I'm gonna just take my scissors and give this a little, little trim. And I've got some embellishments. We're gonna use a little bit of linen thread and tie a bow. Sometimes when it's really curly like this, I'll just take my fingernail and kind of run it through to straighten it, the, to straighten out that curl a little bit. And it still has a little wave to it, but it just makes it easier to, um, to tie and kind of keep things somewhat straight. So I'm going to tie a large bow. I remember when somebody showed me that many, many years ago, I was amazed. <laughs> I thought, what a cool hack. Of course, we weren't calling them hacks back then. <laughs> oh, this is driving me crazy. <laughs> One side is bigger than the other. That's a little better. And I've got this weird itch on my finger. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. So I've got my bow and I'm going to do a little bit of adhesive on the back in the center of my sentiment. And... I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick the bow on kind of diagonally behind it. So it's sticking to that little spot. And then I'm going to use those Stampin' Dimensionals. I really um, like this layout a lot. Thank you. I do too. I'm going to have to try it again with some other things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just going to add this kind of on the side over here. And I think that the the um, the linen thread just really helps to kind of fill in that space. So you can trim, trim those down a little bit. And then I got out the festive pearls. I thought that would be a nice little addition, a little bit of bling to dress up our card and I know you're gonna yell at me, but I'm gonna stick with two. <laughs> I'm not gonna yell. <laughs> well, let me show you. I added a third one when I made my sample and I just didn't like it. I just felt like it was random down here. And I just think that the two in the corner just kind of like corners it off nicely. So I'm leaving it like that. If you make it at home and you wanna add three, then that <laughs> is your choice. <laughs> But there's my so very merry card. I am so glad I got this stamp set because like I said, I have warmed up to it a lot. Um, and I think it's just really beautiful. And I cannot wait to, to see what you made. So let me switch the camera over so you can show us. All right. So I, um, this is, I don't, it, this is completely different than what I originally was thinking of. So first of all, <laughs> I am using sentiments from Brightest Glow because they just kind of seem to fit this card better. So uh, so if you don't see me using the ones from the stamp set, that's why. All right. So uh, very quickly, our card base is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And I went ahead and embossed the greeting on the front. So Merry Christmas in gold. And then I went ahead and die cut uh, with the um, stitched shape, stitched whatever that is. Okay. Stylish shapes. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is our card base. And then I have two pieces of five and a quarter by four inches, one of which I've stamped the inside greeting. So you'll need two pieces of that. Uh, you'll need a piece of balmy blue to do Ooh. some embossing. Is that vellum? It's vellum. Yes. Thank you. You said balmy blue. Did I really? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and then another piece of vellum, which is four inches by three and a half. And this is actually, I'm going to use this to, to form a pocket behind the front of the card. I also did some punching, um, two and three eighth inch circles. I did gold and there's two of those. And then one of two and a quarter inch um, 
white circle. Okay. All right. Now, I pre-colored it so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about this technique, which I call, and I believe that's what it's been called, the um, stained glass. Mm -hmm. So back in before the pre-blend days, we always said, flip it over and you're going to color the back. It hides a lot of sins and you don't have to be too, too careful. So um, I actually did that with these two pieces, which I was going to make different cards and I just simply ran out of time. So this is the Santa. Oh, I love the way you colored those. Thank you. So I used the blends, but on the back side. Same thing with this angel, which is very similar to how I'm going to color the other one. Um, and the and the reason is I embossed it in black first and then thought, what would it look like embossed in gold? So that's Ooh. what I did with this card. So I will keep these. I will make other cards. And uh, all right, so now we're going to get started. So I embossed it in gold ahead of time. And I'm not going to color the whole thing because you don't need to sit here and watch me color. But I am I am going to um, use the front side with this. And, you, you know, you don't have to be too, too careful because it's raised. So it helps you from going outside of the lines unless you are in a super, super hurry. And um, you don't want to uh, take too long. All right. So I am using um, dark bubble bath and I'm doing something a little bit different with her wings. I'm not filling in all the wings, but I didn't want just white wings. So I took the, the bullet tip and I'm just kind of filling in some highlights of the, of her wing. So just kind of maybe along the edges. And I know you can't even see what I'm doing. So let's see if this helps. So can, I don't know if you can see the difference of the white versus the pink. Can you see that, Julie, on camera? Not really. It's, it's hard to see on camera. Okay. So I just basically did all that and threw some pink on there. Let me lift it up closer to the camera. Does that help at all? Nah. A little bit. I can see. I can see a little pink. Okay. I Very did, subtle. That's what I was going for. I just wanted a subtle touch of pink in her wings. Okay. Uh, then I went ahead and colored the rest and then punched it out. So you don't have to watch me color this aside i'll finish this one later so this is going to be our um our, i'm actually making an ornament is what i'm doing Ooh. so uh what i'm going to do is grab my glue dots here and it's very hard to ad adhere vellum because you can see the adhesive through it so mm. you have to be strategic about where you place your glue dots or whatever adhesive you're using so I'm actually pulling it off the roll and I'm going to like kind of where it's busy, kind of along the edge. And I'm going to do it in three spots. And then say a prayer that it stays on. <laughs> All right, so this is another maybe busy area over in this corner. I'm trying to stay away from the real light areas. Yeah. And uh, let's see, I have one here, one here. I'm going to try to go over here and I'm really focusing on the edge, which I colored in wild wheat. Then I'm going to, oh, here, it's got to come out a little bit there. All right. So I'm going to stick it on here and it should stay. If I find I need to add one, I can, but I think it'll be all right. All right. So now I'm going to use my two gold pieces and, and I could probably get away. Well, no, I'm going to do it this way. 
I could, yeah, never mind. So I'm going to back them so that the back is also gold. So let me grab my seal. I did a lot of playing with the set. Amy is here this weekend. Um, and so she gave me some good advice too. <laughs> All right, but I want the substance on this for our ornament. Oh, yeah. So there is the ornament base. And then the other thing that I did, like Julie, whoops, I don't want that to go anywhere, is I took Wink Estella and did her wings. Oh, nice. I was just thinking about how that, um, the edge with the wild wheat, it looks like gold. That's why I use that color, yes. I okay. love that. Yep, okay. Let's see here, that'll take a minute to dry. I love using Wink Costella. It just adds a little shimmer. Yeah. To her wings. All right. So while that's drying, and before I punch my little hole, put this back in here, um, I am going to take this part now and fold this in half. My bone folder. And I'm going to take this piece of vellum and I'm going to place it here. And I'm going to use tear and tape and I'm going to put tear and tape on three edges. Ah. So that the open top then forms the pocket. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to adhere this piece of boho blue over it again, putting tear and tape on three sides and leaving the top open. So you have to be careful because you don't want any of this to poke through the hole. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I find that some of these rolls I have to cut instead of tearing. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm going to put this right along the edge here. And same thing here. Maybe it's just the strength in my hands are gone. That's always possible. Mm. Okay, that shouldn't show through. And then let me just figure this out here. So I'm going to have to come down a little bit, but the I'll put the boho blue, I'll put more adhesive on that and it'll hold this pocket. All right. I hope this is going to make sense. So far so good. I'm loving this idea. <laughs> All right, so I want to make sure that my hole is completely covered. And if the tear and tape shows out a little bit, it's okay. All right, I think that's it. Okay, so even that that's not going to bother me because now I'm going to do the same thing with this. And uh, yeah, 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 I need to trim it a little bit, but I'll I'll see what it looks like when I get done here. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna put some tear and tape on three sides of this piece. I can find my little edge here. Remove these little edges. And I want to center this since this is four inches by five and a quarter. It's going to be close enough. Now, 
I have a little bit too much vellum on this side. So I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to have to get out an adhesive uh, remover and get rid of some of the excess tear and tape. Oh, all right, close enough for now. All right, so now we have this spot right here. And what I want to do is I want to um, emboss another angel that's going to be under this. So I want to kind of figure this piece out. So I'm going to take my pick a tool and I'm going to, should have something under this, but I don't. And I am going to go right kind of under here and poke a hole, which is through vellum and two layers of foil. I hope this works. I used uh, something else that we used to sell, but I've kept it for all these years. Oh, all right. I'm getting it out. Sorry, ladies. It's a puzzle. Do you remember these? That's a crocodile. What did I say? Puzzle. Oh, it's a crocodile. Thank you. Do you still have yours? I do still have my crocodile. Maybe I have my puzzle somewhere too. The puzzle was um. It had like a foamy mat and yeah. this like rotating blade. And so it had different templates and you could use it to cut circles and hearts and all kinds yes. of things. Yes, yes, yes. You are so right. All right. I probably have that somewhere floating around here as well. <laughs> all right. So I'm using, I should tell you what I'm using. This is, uh, I think, an online exclusive now as well. It's gold and silver uh, ribbon. Yes. So um, you want to be able to hang it on your tree. And I, so, you know, you can either, you know, use the ribbon on your tree or you can put a hook around it and put it on your tree. So it's kind of your choice. So I, I did this a little long on purpose. I would definitely use the ribbon. Okay. So I just simply tied a knot there. Trim off the excess. So this is why I did not emboss the other piece yet because I want to be able to figure out my placement. Right? Because I want the embossed angel to come right um, under that. Mm. So I'm going to put a little of my embossing buddy on here. And find my stamp, which I left over here. Because that's the way I'm rolling today. <laughs> this up. That's the lid, Susan. The ink. All right, where's my angel ornament? So this is here. That almost was a disaster. Okay. What I like, that's not too bad. What I like about using vellum under the, the um, boho blue is it softens that blue. So when you open it, you're going to have the darker blues. So I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, she is going to get embossing powder everywhere under there. No problem. I'll clean that up later. And then we're going to grab our embossing tool, our heat tool. Okay, that looks good. All right. I love the way that, I mean, just that right there. I think that's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. So what we can do now, just to show you, is we're going to slide our ornament in over this one. 
but that kind of a look. So um, trying to figure out what to do with this because I don't like it hanging. So what I did, and I didn't bring it with me over here, so I will, but I just kind of pulled this down and put a piece of washi tape right there just to hold it. Oh, good idea. Yeah, so even though we don't sell washi tape right now, I have some still. So that's what I did there. Now, I thought this really needed one more little thing before I put my inside piece on. And that is some of our new <laughs> sneak peek time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> ribbon. Oh, I love this ribbon. It's Night of Navy. So I did a bow, but um, it was so bulky. Mm. He said, oh, just do a knot, mom. So I doing just a knot. Just to put on a glue dot in front of that or on top of that. Because this is a wide, wider than our other, um, maybe a little bit tighter. Wider than the other organdy ribbon, yeah. It is. I'm sorry, I stopped talking. Yeah. That's okay. I get like that sometimes. Like my brain can't do two things at once. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> all right oops now well, that's a not a very good one all right so i'm just going to set this right on top of this maybe a wee bit tighter grab a glue dot but i don't want to put it on the ribbon so i have to make sure it stays on the card And then we'll finish it off with putting our inside piece on. And there it is. Oh my gosh, I love it. You knocked it out of the park with oh, this project. So here is the one that I did earlier. And this one I did color on the backside versus this one colored on the front. Mm, I don't tell that much of a difference, really. That's right. And then just that little piece of washi tape just to secure that here. So, so there is my project. Oh, my gosh. So beautiful. Thanks. Well, right. for now, let's turn the camera around and we'll show off our cards together. So very merry. This special stamp set is an online exclusive, so you won't see it in a catalog, but you can place, uh, you can order it on any kind of order type. You can order it in the online store or you can order it at an in-person event like stamp club or class or over the phone. Um, if you are not seeing it in the catalog, it's because um, it isn't in the catalog. Um, online exclusives is something that is still new this year, but we are going to see um, new releases three times a year. So the next time we'll see some online exclusives that are outside of a regular catalog are going to be in November. Um, but before that, we've got the new mini catalog, which starts September 6th. We're so excited. Um, next week, we'll show you some sneak peeks as we share some project ideas using the new Take Your Pick um, tool attachments. I'm really excited about that. And then we're going to have a stamp along um, the week after that using the Translucent Florals, which is a brand new bundle available in the mini catalog. But you can stamp along using whatever you have at home if you don't have that one yet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We so greatly appreciate it. And until next Sunday, Stamping with Susan and Julie, have a wonderful week. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, Mom. Love Bye, you. Julie. Love you.